Well, hello, hello, everybody. Good to have you back. Well, if you did come back, we are going to do PowerPoint and how to design some pretty cool stuff with PowerPoint. Cami, my friend below me here, is going to be with me. And hi, my name is Dennis. I'm from Winnipeg in Treaty 1, and I'm a, a, a technology coach, a coordinator for a small division out here in Winnipeg. And I work with students and teachers, especially with PowerPoint, but all sorts of different things. And looking forward to working with you today with how to design using PowerPoint. Cami, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, hello there. I'm also from the Prairies. I'm from Medicine Hat, Alberta. And my job is quite a bit like Dennis's. I'm also an um, instructional coach and I get to work with students and teachers in their classrooms doing fun things like designing with PowerPoint and other tools and coding and all sorts of things. And so we are excited to um, work with you today and give you some great ideas for how you can use PowerPoint for presentations. We always like to start with a treaty acknowledgement. And I would like to acknowledge that where I am in my school board is right on the boundaries between Treaty 4 and Treaty 7. And this is the ancestral land and territory of the Siksika, the Kainai, the Pakani, Stony Nakoda, and the Tsutina people of Treaty 7. And also the Cree, the Sioux, and the Soto bands of the Ojibwe people from Treaty 4. And we also have lots of Métis in Alberta as well. We would like to acknowledge uh, all the traditional knowledge holders and elders who've gone before us. And I have a picture of what it looks like in my part of the world today. You can see it's flat prairies, and we still have lots and lots of snow. Now, it's spring by the calendar but not necessarily by looking outside. And so I always think of our, um, our First Nations ancestors and how they, you know, they had to survive despite what the calendar said. They were so attuned to the seasons and, and living off the land and, and learning its signals. And, and probably just like us, we're a little disappointed that spring's slow. I imagine that um, if you lived in a shelter that had less insulation than where you you were used to you'd be disappointed with this little spring as well and so uh, we're always glad to learn yeah. more about the land on the next slide you're going to see a picture of nativeland.ca this is a great place to learn about what treaty land you are on and which traditional people lived on your land before you today we would like to give a big Shout out to our colleague, Emma Cottier. So she works with us at the Cobblestone Collective. Emma is probably the most brilliant digital designer in Canada. She is just so talented and we are lucky today. We get to uh, share her work and her talents. Uh, the designs and the templates that we're going to use were created by Emma. And we're going to help you learn how to do all sorts of things. <laughs> All right. And also thank you to Microsoft who is putting this together for us so we can get do this for free. It's awesome. And you can work with PowerPoint. Now, we do have a problem. You can hear us and see us. However, we can't really see you or hear you, but we do have a plan. So I think if you were with us yesterday, I have a feeling some of you are with us yesterday and um, you probably know the drill, but here's here's what you do. You, you open up a new tab on your computer or laptop or Chromebook or whatever you, iPad, whatever you have, and you put in the cc.page slash answers one and you'll ha have a chance to or you'll be able to talk to us so you can put in your name and then put in uh where you're from if you wouldn't mind doing that see if we have the same people we had from yesterday that'd be great to see you and a lo lot of you came from ontario so let's see if you uh, could get that going see if the forum's working and we'll give you some shout outs as you come on what grade you're from what school you're in uh perhaps uh what school division you're or uh, school board you're from so we'll get that going right off the hop. So that's cc.page answer one. Note that there's no S. It's not answers. It's just answer one. And that's how you can communicate with us. As we go along today, we will have questions for you. We, of course, always love to know where you're coming to us from. But you can also share some of the things that you are designing with us today. Yeah. And it could be a teacher's at, at the front of the classroom and is, is putting this in for, for all of you, too. So you can always get your qu uh, questions or your answers uh, through your teacher as well. All right. So the first hey. friend we have with us is Naomi. And Naomi is coming Hi, to Naomi. us from Ontario and looks like maybe Burlington. 
Okay, good. So we're going to keep moving on. And if you want to join us, oh, we have some friends back from London, Ontario again, Nunavut Arctic College. You were with us yesterday. Oh, yes. Yes, Welcome Susan. back. So hi, Susan and others there. Okay, so today we are going to look at how we can use PowerPoint for more than just presentations. We're going to blow your mind with all the different things that you can use uh, for PowerPoint as a publishing tool. So we're going to look at a bunch of built-in design tips throughout the, the morning we are going, or throughout the, our time together, we're going to look at all sorts of different design tips and we are going to give you a, a template bank of different templates that you can turn into your own. So that's what you'll be uh, creating with us as we go through today. Hello, Eleanor from Quebec. Welcome here. She just signed in. All right, excellent. Okay, Dennis, let's uh, keep let's keep rolling here. We're going to talk, okay. talk a little bit about some things now. Um, we are going to talk about different ways that we can get creative. Uh, there's so many different things that we can do. We're going to teach you different places that you can go with in PowerPoint to add all sorts of different things like additional shapes, additional icons, stickers, illustrations, arrows. Uh, we're going to talk about colors and fonts, all of those different kinds of things. And one of the things that uh, we're going to start off with is letting you know that all of our templates today, and we'll get you to those in a moment, are designed in the size of a sheet of paper so that they're excellent for printing. Awesome. So to do that, I'm going to just uh, pop over to my PowerPoint. Oh, actually, Dennis. Can you do it? Is that yeah. the one you want? That's the one you like? Yeah. I think we're going to get there. Sorry, did you pop me? Yeah, there yeah, we go. You're on. So, so what we're going to go do is we're going to go to design. And then when you go to design, you can go to slide size. And when you click on slide size, when you click on slide size, <laughs> oh, goodness. When you click on slide, slide size. Is it not opening for you? It's not. Nothing's happening. Okay. Well, try to refresh, see if that happens. When you click on slide, slide size, uh, it'll give you some options. So we'll try that one more time here. Slide size. There, there we go. There we so go. it gives us standard. That's that kind of that, that, you know, that long, narrow look like a typical slide. But we also have custom slide sizes. So we've gone to portrait. And we have 8.5 by 11 inches, and that is the slide size of a sheet of paper. So mm. we're designing in a tall sheet of paper. If we wanted our paper to go the other way, we'd go 11 inches wide by eight and a half high. And that would still print out of your photocopier, but on the landscape size. Mm. And so we can do all sorts of, um, we could, we could, go two feet by three feet. We could go 11 by 17. That's another size that your photocopier might do. So just so you know, you can do all different kinds of slide sizes. Okay, right. Dennis, we're going to go back to your, uh, your screen while I try to refresh and sure. fix things up here. Okay, so all about, um, as we design today, the big thing to remember is that we are going to look at layering. When we publish beautiful things with PowerPoint, it's all about different layers. And so most templates, including the ones that we're going to work with today, are layers on top of layers on top of layers. So we're going to teach you some tips and tricks for getting, for changing the part of the layer that you want mm -hmm. without having to redo all the layers. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to teach you lots of, of trips, uh, tricks for doing that. If you add something new to a design today, um, you can remember that it's going to go right on top and then you have to adjust the layers. So we're going to give you some tips for even getting around that. Okay. We have a great All treat right. for you today. We are going, we introduced you to Emma before. Our friend Emma has a great PowerPoint template design pack, slide pack, 10 wonderful templates that you are going to get today and you can use those forever after. Um, so teachers, students, we're going to walk you through this 
And we're going to give you a minute to try to get, this is going to be the hardest thing we do today is to get that PowerPoint template open. When you first um, get it, it's going to be view only. And then we're going to have to get it into a way to view it. Dennis, do you want to take us through that part? Sure, I can do that. So first off, what we need to do is, again, in the new tab, just like we did the form, create a new tab and you can get an online template here. So this is the website right here. And you can type that all in, the CC page, uh, the CC dot page. page slash PPT or PowerPoint PPT templates. I know it's a lot of P's and T's <coughs> and make sure you get those all in there because if you miss one letter, it, it messes it up. So I'll let you get going. See if you can get into that web page first. And I think what I'll do is I'll flip over to my page here and see if I can get that, uh, get that on. Just give me a second. I'll flip that over. So while you're doing that, when you go to save as, it might uh, give you a little button in the middle of the page. It says file download or open in OneDrive. Those would be great things to do. And Dennis is going to show us what that's going to look like. There we go, Dennis. Uh, there we go. So, so I think, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, when you open the PowerPoint, the template, it's going to say view only. So in the orange bar along the top, it'll say view only. And you're going to want to change that. Yeah, so right up in here, I'll, it's right up there. You can probably see my big green arrow. It says view only right there. And what we need to do, if I remember correctly, you can help me out here, Cami. I go to file. I go to file. Now I'm getting the same. There we go. And you can go same as or save as and rename. No, we want to do download a copy right here. So we're going to download a copy. And then your presentation is ready to download. Now, teachers, I'm not too sure where you would like your kids to or your students to download that copy. But as you can see, you might not be able to see it on my page, but um, my computer opens up. No, it doesn't want to show up here. So it's it's a pop up screen that you can't see, but it's the all the folders in my computer. So you can decide. And I know some school boards will have one drive available. It depends on how you want to save that. But uh, feel free to uh, talk to your teachers where you'd like to save that. Um, and then you'll be ready to go. All right. So we have. Friends like Sophia and Eleanor, Zoe, Aslan, if you want to ask your teachers about where they would like you to save that so you can find it, that's great. So once you've saved it and downloaded it, then you need to go to where it is and open that up. All right. So in the chat, teachers, students, if you can let us know if you are able to get to that PowerPoint and save it in an editable version so that it no longer says view only on the top bar. We'd love to know that. Make sure that's, that's this is gonna be the hardest thing we do today is to get that going. So we we like yeah. to know that some of that, some of you are, are getting that flipped over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll take a bit of time, but once you have it, it'll you'll be a wowed by the cool PowerPoint templates you have. It's really neat. Okay, so you're going to get some templates that look like, this will pop over here. Very good. There we go. And once you get it open, you can start to scroll through and just take a look at all of the choices of templates that you have today. Now we're going to talk about lots of those. We're going to we're going to look at uh, manipulating some elements of all of them, but you might want to choose one to start with. So. You can see that we have a hockey player, like a, a hockey playing card. Um, this is a character summary. This is from Harry Potter, but you could choose any character from a movie or a, a, a book. Um, there's some news article templates. There's a comic strip. There's a magazine cover. Um, we've got Time magazine, but you could, you could even change that title if you wanted. Maybe you could make a whole new magazine name. And then there's some other... Once here, there is a yearbook page and finally another magazine cover for Canadian Geographic. So once you get in, uh, Susan has that saved template in editable format. Thank you, Susan, for letting us know. That's great to hear. 
um, you can scroll through and take a look at which of those you might be most interested in designing with today. You can design with all of them. You can do some um, playing around in all of them. You can come back, you can follow along as we lead. Uh, you can do all of that. All right. It's very exciting. Good, good to have you on, Susan. How about everybody else? Let us know if you are able to download those templates uh, into your computer and if you got it so you can edit it. That's what we'd like to see in the form. What's next? Can all right. So, Dennis, I think as, as our friends are getting that all ready to go, again, uh, teachers, students, if you are needing some more time at any point, you can press pause and get everyone caught up and then just press play and pick mm -hmm. back up with us. So that happens all the time in a co-taught lesson. You pause when you need to and then you join us again when you're ready. So, Dennis, we're going to dive in and we're going to start to learn tips and tricks about, yes. uh, about wonderful design things that we can do in PowerPoint. So the very first template that we have is a hockey card. Now, this could be a hockey card. It could be a volleyball card. It could be a soccer card. It could be a chess club card. This could be a, a card for every student in your class. Maybe you have a, a playing card deck for each student in your class. This can be anything that you want. But the first thing that we're going to want to do is we are going to want to change that picture. So the very first trick is going to apply to all the pictures that we have in this in these templates today. So when we want to change, if you can see that that picture is behind some things, right? There's all sorts of words and icons and stars over top of that picture. So we want to use a little trick to get a picture right in the same spot that that picture is. We're going to use this lots today. So I'm going to right click on my picture. You can see that pop up that comes. And then we want to make sure we're using change picture. Now, if you have a picture of you playing hockey, playing chess, playing soccer, whatever it is, you can pick from your device. So if you've got a, um, a picture saved, you can put this and get your own picture. That's probably the best way to get your own picture. But let's say that you wanted to make this from your favorite hockey team. So uh, we're going to go to from Bing Pictures, and then we get to search Bing. Now, Dennis, Dennis, there's no NHL team where I live. What? You but, have. Okay. But I know that you have an NHL team. Oh, boy. I don't know if I should even say this online, but I will say it anyway, because some people might get mad at me. Are I like... Winnipeg Jets fan. Okay, so we're going to type Winnipeg. We have to do this for Dennis. Winnipeg Jets <laughs> hockey player. Oh. Okay, so I'm, I'm also gonna, a I'm gonna, Boston Bruin fan, too, so maybe that might help people. We're going to go with Winnipeg Jets, Dennis. Okay, all right. Because I, I, I can do Winnipeg, but I can't do Boston. <laughs> okay, now we're going to. I ooh. see lots of things that look like might be pictures showing up. Yes. But they're, they're grayed out. Let's see here. They're going to, no, we want to keep this button on that says Creative Commons because that means that those, those um, pictures are able to be used. Maybe that, maybe Bing doesn't like the Winnipeg Jets. Well, not the first person that has not liked the Winnipeg Jets. Oh, oh look, look at that. that. Must have been the Jets, Dennis. Okay, yes. we're going to go well, with the Edmonton, we're going to go with the Edmonton Oilers. Woohoo! Now, right. you've, now I'm curious to see if I can get the Winnipeg Jets on mine. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to pick this picture. Uh, it's a skating picture. It looks like an action shot. I like that one. Who, who does it look like they're playing there? Is that Colorado? Uh, I can't tell. Is that Colorado? Sorry. Maybe. Anyways, that won't matter. We're going to pop that in. And so can you see here how we now have that picture and it's in the right layer oh, and nice. it's in the right frame? So we don't have to do anything. Where did you go so to I'm do gonna, again? I'll show you again. So we're going to yeah. right click on the picture, change picture. And I went to oh, pictures okay. from Bing. We could pick anything. And I don't know, Winnipeg Jets. I'm, I'm trying. Hockey player. <laughs> it doesn't seem to want to. Well, I think it's your, I think it's your Jets. <laughs> 
Let's try Toronto. Does Bing like Toronto? Toronto. Oh, boy. Maple Leafs. Oh, I got Winnipeg Jets showing up. You I finally just put got in, them? I got one. I just added Winnipeg Jets. I didn't put in hockey players. So okay. that, that did work. So I'm going to try that out and see. If, yeah, I got. I was able to get it in there. So that's good. All right. So awesome. Yeah. That's a great tip. I like it that. It is. So that, so again, you can pick right click. Change picture, and then you could go to any of those. But Bing Pictures is probably where you'll find a picture. You could use your NHL team. You might have a local team. You might have a, a team. If, if, if you can, you probably won't be able to find pictures of your team online from Bing Pictures with the Creative Commons turned on. So um, that might be an issue there. All right. So we have a picture now. So what we're going to do now is you can see that we can change down here, hockey team. I can just type right in here, Edmonton Oilers. Now, something, Dennis, that I'd like to point out as well. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Can you see at the bottom? I'm going to try to make this bigger. When I added that picture, can you see right above us here? Yeah. Yeah. That it says this photo by unknown author is licensed under CC BYNC. So when we pick a picture from Bing, the CC stands for Creative Commons. So uh, this means that the light we have a picture that is free to use for any create creation. We have full permission to use this picture, and that's why it's so great to use that that Creative Commons piece that these pictures are able to be used. Nice. Okay, so now let's say that we want to change the team logo here. This is a text box. And so it's not going to let me um, put a picture inside of it, but I can go insert pictures and I'm going to go Bing pictures again. And I'm going to say Edmonton Euler. This time I'm going to say logo. Just pick that one. Hmm. So now it sits on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it. I'm going to, I can delete this. See how it's got those dots around it. That means that image, that part of the image is live. I'm going to just hit, oops, hit delete. And I'm going to put my logo right down there. Um, Cami, can I ask you a question? Cause yes. I, I noticed when I work with kids on this, sometimes uh, when I put in a logo like that or a, um, a logo, let's just say, or a picture. Sometimes what we have is that white box around it. How did you get it so that white box isn't around it? So it's got that transparent look. Did mm, you? Yes. So I, I just, I didn't. But what we, what if you get a box and it, like this came as a nice clean logo. Yeah. That's so right. if we go to pictures again, Bing pictures, we could type um, at Euler's logo, PNG. no background or okay. PNG tip. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes a PNG file has um, no background. Sometimes it does. You can't. Sometimes it's. Sometimes it looks like it's going to work, but it it's hard to tell really till you import it. So yeah, yeah but that works. Okay. Nice. But it does happen sometimes. You might see that white box behind it, and it's you want to clean that up. That's how you do it. That's yeah. yeah. Good good cool. question there. So we can we can right. change our 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 stars here. L W at the bottom stands for left wing. So we can change. Any of that. So mm -hmm. um, that is a great way to change that picture. Let's look at our next template. So this template is a character summary. So this might be a great, I mean, you could certainly use it after you've read a story, after you've done a movie study, a novel study, or maybe your teacher assigns you a character uh, summary. Again, maybe your teacher has you do an about me for everyone in your class. And okay. so this could be an about you. So let's um, let's stick with Harry Potter. It looks like we've got a little bit of a Gryffindor theme going on with the colors there. So let's say we wanted to change Harry. We're gonna practice the same thing that we just did. Let's say I wanna do, I don't know, let's do Ron. So I'm gonna right click and you can see those dots around show me that the image is live. Right click, change picture. I'm going to go back to Bing, and I'm going to type Ron Weasley. Hmm. It's taking a while to generate. It is, yeah. Um, 
Oh, Happy Potter. Whoops. <laughs> well, I was. I thought Tell maybe you, I thought maybe that would come up a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it is today. Moiny Granger. We like. That, oh, there well, you go. I don't know. I guess. Boy, my computer is pretty choosy today. <laughs> Or Bing is. All right. So we can see that we've got lots of pictures of Hermione. Some are uh, older, some are newer ones. Oh, this is one of my favorite books right here. I'm going to pick this one. It's from the end of, toward the end of the series. So we're going to stick Hermione in there. So there you can see we have Hermione. We can, we can add it. Now, do you notice here, Dennis, if I, if I push it over so that we get more of Herm Hermione's face, mm -hmm. if... If it goes off the page, it's okay, actually, because when it prints, it's only going to print what's over top of the, the page size. So in this case, if I have that sliding off, um, we could go ahead and crop it, but we don't even need to. Only The oh. only thing that's going to print is what's on the page. So that's something that we what, might want to remember. What I have seen, what kids or what students do is they pull those little handles and they oh, squish, squish yes. the picture, which makes the picture do doesn't look Let's as Let's talk nice. about what we don't want to oh, do. Oh yeah, okay? that's squishing. So anytime that we have a picture, we don't, I'm just gonna undo to get it back to regular size. There we go. We don't want to pull in from the sides. Anytime we resize a picture, we want to go from the top or bottom corners. Yeah. Uh, when we pull from the bottom or the yeah, you top, it. it distorts it. So that's a great cool. reminder, Dennis. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so um, now if we click over here, we could type in. It's a little difficult to type sideways, but Hermione. All right. Now, you'll notice that that is too big, and it puts my design off. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to select all of that. Oh, I'm having trouble with the E. There we go. And then I'm just going to, to come over here and I'm going to choose a smaller size. Oh, I've got a, huh. there we go. Can you see how I have a space there, Dennis? So I'm going to I delete do. the space and then I'm going to put that back in. Oh, it wants to get rid of the E as well. I might need to make it a little smaller. All right, so we can... Okay. I think you could probably make the box bigger too. I think sometimes that works. Oh, maybe just the box. Yeah, so we can play around it and we can we can play around. We can change that to Granger. So sometimes we have to change the, the font style. Now we could also change the font style uh, if we wanted. And this is Modern Love. We could pick um, another font as well. Sometimes changing the font style helps with the size as well. Now we've got all these other box down here. We could put in the title of the novel that we have, but in these other boxes, we could type words. So these are shapes that we have. And did you know, Dennis, that in a shape, we can just start typing. Um, oh, Hermione's cat is named. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, the name of, oh, help me out in the form. What's the name of... Hermione's cat. Oh my goodness. I so know this and all of a sudden I can't remember. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So what we'll do is we, this is embarrassing. Hermione's cat is okay. Dennis, can you Google that for us? I will do it. Cause it's going to bug me now. Okay. okay. What we can do though, is we can insert a whole bunch of different things. We're going to do an icon. There's so many things that we can do. We've already looked at pictures. Look at what we have access to under icons. So when we click on the icons, I'll show you that again. It looks, it says icon. It looks like a little bird with a leaf over. So now we have all of these icons. And so an icon has, usually there's two of them in uh, PowerPoint. You have one that's kind of a black and one that's kind of a, a, a white one. So we've got all of these different pieces. I'm going to search cat. All right. Now, um, I think you're looking for Crookshanks. Crookshanks. Thank you, Dennis. Oh, that would have bugged me all day. I'm going to pick, I'm actually going to pick both so we can see what they look like. So we're going to insert two. So they go in the middle. We're going to put both of those Crookshanks down here. I'm going to click off. Now, they're hard to see on that, that Gryffindor burgundy. So I'm going to make them a little bigger. 
All right. Now, normally I wouldn't put the same icon in both boxes, but I want us to see how they look. Now we can change the color here. So if I click on them and I come to home and I've got my fill bucket over here, I can change that to, I don't know, maybe like a golden color. All right. And oh, yeah. Crookshanks is kind of an orange kind of tabby color. Um, so maybe we even make, oh, that, uh, I don't love that, but you can see where I'm going with that. We can make Crookshanks. Yeah. That's not the right color orange either. Everybody can play around with that. Yeah, we can play uh, around with that, right? Yeah. So we, we've got all of these icons. You can see where one is kind of a, a, a solid fill and then the other is a white outline. So depending on what you're designing, those might be useful for you. That's very cool. I like it. All right. And so, of course, we can we can do a novel we could do really anything this could be a science skill this could be a country summary if you're in social studies and maybe you have a country that you have to do a little bit of information about mm -hmm. we could do just about anything all right the next one actually the next two are news articles all right so you can see that they're they're a little bit different in their format but they have some similarities for example they both have a header and they both have this little megaphone and so while this is a, a newspaper we might um, have lots of assignments that we that teachers assign for newspapers maybe it is create a newspaper about a day in the life of the novel that you are studying or the short story that you're studying maybe you even do a current events assignment where Instead of the daily news, we can change this to the weekly news. Or this week in your school or something yeah, like that. Yeah, this week at Alexandra High, whatever that looks like. Let's make that a little smaller. All right, so we can, we can change that to anything that we want. Remember, we can change the font size. Watch this. We can also... Move that around a bit. Nice. Now, again, we can change the icon by going to insert. Oh, actually, no, we want to, we don't want to do that. We want to right click, change graphic, and then we want to go to from icon. So just remember, that's the same thing we did with the image, but because we want the layering to stay the same, um, we we're going to use the right click. So let's say we wanted to uh, make that into a, Let's go with an airplane. And now we could also come back to home. We could make that airplane a color. Okay, and I can fill the airplane. Oh, it's just going on the outline there. I, if I wanted the airplane to be solid, I have to use the other, other version of it. It's just changing the outline color there. So we can see we can change the date, all the different things again. Uh, you notice that when I clicked on the icon, change it said change graphic. When I click on the image, right click because we want to keep it in the same layer, change picture, and there we have all of those images. Now, Bing also, or sorry, PowerPoint also has wonderful stock images. Mm, so I let's see. say that we are going, oh, we had an airplane. Let's put travel in here. Oh, okay, wow. so, so there's lots of beautiful images about travel. Travel. Um, this one actually looks like someone getting into an airplane. So that, you know, maybe we have an airplane theme here about traveling. So maybe our title is the travel news. All right. So again, um, those images, so right click, change picture. This time I went to stock images. There are so many different stock images here and you can see that we can search by um scenic right so if we wanted to travel to oh the prairies dennis <laughs> all right so maybe maybe we're doing a newspaper about a geographic region of canada so many possibilities and lots of different things that we can do here so these are some suggested text boxes now they could be about anything you can change the size of that text box. Oh, and watch this, Dennis. A trick that we'll use a bunch of times today. If I have my item 
selected with those dots around and I do control D. Control D is for duplicate. I think that's my mm. favorite trick. Oh, and wow. then I can move it around. And there it is. Now, did you also notice, actually, let's get that. Does it keep what, the same uh, order too or the same? It, it, it would put it on top. So okay. you can see now that it's going to be the top thing because it's the newest thing. But did you watch as I move that around the page? Can you see those red lines yeah. flashing in the background? Those help us create alignment. So oh, isn't yes. that great? We yeah. can make sure. So if I want to, like if I put it here, it's not in line. But if I move it, can you see how it helps me get yep. it directly aligned? And then I can also see that it's not quite level with the image above. So I might want to pull that up a little bit. See that? So yeah. now I can see that it matches. So those alignment uh, tracks are really helpful as well. So control D to duplicate anything. So we can use that on the image. Oops, image control D. And again, whatever we do puts it to the front. Mm. So now that's on the front. Okay. And I'll just delete that. Okay. Any other questions there, Dennis? How are we doing? No, we're doing well. Uh, I'm sure everybody's working very hard. We got Zoe and Susan, and I, I'm not too sure how to pronounce her name. I, Aslin, I'm not too sure if I'm pronouncing right, but they they are working hard. And I believe Susan also said it. Crookshanks is yes. Ron's cat. So hey, yeah. thank you. I I <laughs> Scabbers is Ron's rat. Hedgewig is Harry's owl. I know those things, but I just, you know, when you need crookshanks, it falls out of your head. Uh, All right. Uh, so, Dennis, yeah. you know, before we go on, we might we, we might also want to just talk quickly about choosing fonts here because okay. this looks quite newspaperly to me, like it looks serious. But if we change the font, we have to be careful. So, if I come to fonts, so I've highlighted my font, I've come up to fonts on the home screen. And there's a whole bunch of different ones here. But if I click at the bottom under Office Fonts, I get, I get, come on. Oh, why aren't they coming up for me? There we go. I get a whole bunch more. Now, some of these aren't going to be great for a newspaper. So let's see. Um, this one is kind of scripty. That's too informal. It's hard to read. That's not going to be a great choice. So something that looks like handwriting or is kind of um, uh, themed and it's a little, right? Like this just, this just isn't the right font yeah. for yeah. a serious piece like a newsletter. So you always want to make sure that your font fits what you're doing. All right, and something pretty bold. Something big. bold too. So this one, actually, if I look at this one, um, oh, that's that, good one. that one's really thin, but it looks more more serious. Now, actually, if I if I come back to this one, it's actually an italic font, which I don't love. So let's see, G for did you know that fonts come in alphabetical order? So I'm going to find yeah. that one by going down to. Oh, you're looking for whether there it is. Okay, now. Did Take you off. know that if I click on um, the little arrow, sometimes I have other options as well, like narrow or bold or italics or, or yes, other things Yes, I've seen as that. Well. Yeah, I've seen that on different fonts, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, like a, a well, handwriting font might be great if we're doing a letter or if we're doing something – that might need handwriting but we always have to realize that the font meaning the font has meaning and so we can actually even create meaning in our work by using fonts okay let's do another one comic oh, yes. strip comic strips are one of my most favorite so yes. you can see here that one of the things that i've used in a comic strip is my bitmoji now that's a whole nother session on its own so we're not going to uh, talk about how to create Bitmojis, but if you have a Bitmoji, um, some schools, depending on how old you are, you might not be able to use your Bitmoji or have access to that with your school computer, but Bitmojis do make nice comic strips. So teachers, if you want to design in a comic strip, strip manner, try using your Bitmoji. That can be lots of fun. What we're going to do is we're going to show a great place to find comic strip oh, yes. people. Can you believe this? So we're going to go to insert. I just found it. 
We're going to go back to icons and then look at this. So at, across the top, cartoon people. So there are all of these cartoon people, right? So we've got yeah. babies, all sorts of people. Um, this guy is holding a poster, so we could put we could put um, the poster, and then we could have him. We could put whatever we want on that poster. All right. So there's lots yeah, and wow. lots and lots of. I, I like those blank faces. You can put your own uh, emotions in those faces by using different eyes and smiles and absolutely eye, and so eyebrows and whatnot. There's tons of things that we can do, right? So there's so many, so many different parts. We're just going to go ahead and actually, so look down here. You can you can pick the body and a different head. Oh, it just goes on. Yeah, we're just gonna right. for our our uh, sense our needs today. We're we're just gonna pick. Um, well, I have the guy with the beard. Let's go with this Cyclops, one-handed <laughs> person. So let's imagine these two guys are having a conversation. Can you see here? I've got my lines going again, and I want to make this guy a little bit bigger. Remember, I don't want to pull from the top or the bottom. I want to pull from the side to keep his aspect. Now, Dennis, these guys, if I want them to have a conversation, what's my oh. trouble? They're, they're not facing – if you want to be a good listener, if you want to talk with somebody, you should be facing each other. So they're both facing to the right. I guess it's their left, but they're both facing the right. How do you – How do you? I think I know how to do that, but show us okay, how to do Okay, so I'm going to click on the character. Let's change the new guy that we put in here. I'm going to come up, and I'm going to click on graphics. So when I click on graphics, I get a different toolbar across the top. I'm going to choose a range, and then I'm going to hit rotate – and I'm oh, going to go flip yeah. horizontal. Oh, there we go. All right. Perfect. So now it looks like they are having a discussion. That's okay. great. Okay. Now, we also need to give them a speech bubble. So how do we do oh, a speech okay. bubble? Okay. So we're going to come back to insert. And we're going to go to shapes. We haven't been into shapes. We're going to look at shapes. And if you go all the way to the bottom... You can use any of these, but if you go up to all the way to the bottom, you have something called callouts. Mm -hmm. And so there's a couple different kinds here. So we can pop that one in. Mm -hmm. And actually, do you see how my mouse is live? I'm mm -hmm. going to click and drag to create that shape. Now, it turned out blue because that was the last thing I used in my fill bucket. <laughs> so I might want to just make it gray. Now... I can also resize it and you can also move the the arrow or whatever right? the I could yeah the I can make it sideways if I wanted. Now we can notice here that there's nothing that says that the parts of your comic have to stay within the boxes. Sometimes we can have body parts or speech bubbles coming off the page, right? Mm -hmm. So we can do we can do lots of different things here. Dennis, what, how do we know if someone's thinking versus speaking oh, in a comic? What's the difference? Oh, yes. I know this one. The, the thinking ones have little circles going up to the speech bubble. So that's a thinking bubble. And then the speech ones are more of an arrow going to the person, if I remember correctly. Excellent. Yes. So you can choose those. So lots of different options there. Okay. We're going to spend time looking at this next one. So we have time. And let's take a look at reviewing how to get that picture in and also talk about choosing pictures. So if we look at this one for Time Magazine, you notice that we want to have room at the top of our picture so that the words don't interfere or compete with the image behind it. So we're going to go to Insert and Pictures, and I'm going to go to, let's go to Bing pictures and let's go to um i don't know let's try mountains mm. we have to find something that bing will do for me today mm. beach mm. well this is unexpected okay it's, it's City? Might have to be more specific, perhaps. I don't know. New York. 
Wow. It's really, okay. let me see if I can get mine going here. All right. So what we want to do is we want to find, huh, I don't know why that's happening. Okay. So we're going to try, let's just, do, uh, let's do this. Do one of your themes. Let's, or... let's, well, let's just pick a theme. Yes. So let's go to cars. And that still isn't opening. Okay, so <laughs> I've got some funny internet issues. We can see here that when we do that, we would actually want to, I just went up to pictures here, but I should have gone to change picture, Bing pictures. No, nope. let's just see what happens if we pick one and insert it. Oh, that Look worked. at that. Well, that worked. Okay, so you can see this is what I would have chosen. We've got those elephants. There's some fairly plain space up time. Up top, those red words still uh, stick out. Let's take a look at, oh, there's something we haven't looked at. Let's look at adjusting the transparency. So you can see here, if you see this box right here, Dennis, you can see that we can kind of see through it, right? Mm -hmm. We've got the, the elephant. We can kind of see the elephant and the rocks and That's right. the water through it. So this is a, a, an interesting thing that we want to do. So I'm going to click on that shape and then I'm going to come up to my fill bucket. And if I come to the bottom, let's say we want to make this kind of match the rocks. See, now it's not see-through anymore. So I'm going to come back to my fill bucket. And if I come down to the very bottom, more fill colors, look at this. I get a transparency meter. So I'm going to put it to about half and you can see oh, wow. now I can see through it. Oh, I think I needed that a little darker. Not that dark. Whoops. <laughs> okay. So we want it a little darker. Maybe we'll go a little bit more, but I could also then maybe I need to change the color of my font right, yeah. there yeah. to something a little darker. That's easier to read. Right. So we can change. That orange doesn't look very good there. I should change it, but we're going to leave it. You can see how we can adjust the transparency. Now, another thing that we should talk about, Dennis, is that we can save these as image files. Sometimes if we want to put our work on a website or we want to put our work into, I don't know, let's say book creator, or we want to print it, um, sometimes we want to use it as an image file. So there's two different typical image files that we use. One is called a JPEG or .jpg. The other one is called a .png. And we've talked about those before. So I'm going to go to file, save as, and then I could go download as an image. And so it says your file is ready to print. And there it asks me to uh, where I want to download it. So that would be nice. as an image file. All right. So um, that's really a great way to use lots of these great designs and beautiful yeah. things that we're doing as well. So the next couple here are some more basic, um, templates. You can see we have a short story template. Just think about all the different things, characters, conflicts, themes, settings. You can change the font. You can put images in there. You could put words in there. Um, you can change the picture. You could put your picture in the chair. You could add a picture from the setting of the novel. You can do anything. Remember to change it, right click, change picture. Oh, and then let's actually, oh, I want to try something. So let's click on this one, right click, change picture um, from stock images. And let's actually do cut out people and oh, no. see if we have someone that is sitting. sitting. I know you can search in there for people sitting and I noticed that your uh, stock images are showing up now. So that's good. Well, now they are. Yes. That's nice of them, isn't it? Oh, they're okay. sitting in chairs or wheelchairs. They are sitting in chairs already. So that's, that's mm -hmm. not quite well. You know what? So let's just put uh, this guy in his wheelchair, right? So we could put something totally different in there. So you might find someone that that you think looks like a character. Mm. All right. So all different things that we can do there. Scientific process. Again, this is one thing leads to another leads to another. This could be about science. This could be about social uh, studies. This could be an exhibition of learning where you show the process of the steps 
of a project. This was this, the project in October and November and December. Um, you can see we have a materials list. We can type anything in there. Now, when I think about science fair, Dennis, or scientific process, I also think about science fair. And sometimes, you know, in science, we have those big trifold boards. Can right. you imagine yeah. making these beautiful oh, publications yes. and then printing them? So if we wanted, we could actually change the size of this template to like two feet by three feet. And then we could send that off to uh, Staples or a, a store to be printed. Probably you can't do that on most of your photocopiers, but you could send that away to be mm -hmm. printed. And so that would be a great way to make beautiful posters for your classroom or yeah. science fair posters for your trifle board, all different kinds of things. Right. That I know there's, do. there's some high schools. I, I'm not too sure if you're in your board have, have those big printers, like they're uh, mm. four feet wide kind of thing. They're yes. huge yeah. printers. And you can do boat posters and banners and so That's on. That's a good point. So if you have one of those fancy big uh, printers, I think actually we have one in our district. Um, you could do that as well. Although often those companies print fairly reasonably and then it's on kind of like a glossy poster. Yeah. Paper. So, it, so it that's often neat. pretty yeah. nice. Here's a five paragraph essay. Now the other thing, again, remember these templates are on eight and a half by 11. So that's the size of a sheet. So as a teacher, I sometimes create my, my student work pages or worksheets in PowerPoint. So this one, I probably wouldn't even have students use this as often in a digital design. I would take this and I would print it and then have my students, I would probably get rid of where it says insert text. I would delete that. And then my students could write in there with their pens and pencils, hmm. right? So we can, we can use any of these as, as a place to design printed materials as well. Okay, so a couple items left. Here we have this great yearbook page. Um, remember, probably the most important thing when you're using these templates. Oh, although, did you know, Dennis, do you know where that um, uh, place is? In the, do you know what that's a picture of? It's my favorite place in Canada. It looks like it's in Quebec City. That's it is. Saying. It's the yeah. Chateau Frontenac in Quebec City. That's like my one of my most favorite places. If I wanted to change that, I would go, again, right-click, Change picture, and I would type something else in the background. Hmm. And now it's the Bay of Fundy, nice. right? So you can you can type something else in there. Um, again, remember, change picture. And, oh, my picture would have to be adjusted in size, so we'd have to do a little work there. All right, and then one of the – actually, this is the last – in here we have – this great uh, Canadian Geographic, just like you would use with the Time Magazine template, right, um, yeah. you would want to change. You would want to leave some space so that uh, you didn't have anything competing with the words at the top. You can use those transparencies, and then you can see how we've also used color. the The font or the image in the background is very dark, so we don't need a dark font. We we've used light colored fonts to sit over top of that. Hmm. Yeah, like those are beautiful. All right. And then again, remember, we want to work smarter, not harder. So if we wanted to um, change this, okay, I'm going to see if we can make this work here. I've uh, chosen a picture. This, this I'm going to ch yeah. choose the, it's just a white box in the background to make it look like. Uh, it's oh, like a polar, Polaroid, Polaroid or something. Yeah, to make it look like a Polaroid. I was going to see if I could get them both selected at once, but it's not. Hmm. Usually if I hit shift and do both of those, it works, but we could just do the box in the back. Or again, change picture. Um, we can change that around to match the Bay of Fundy. All right. So um, lots of different things that we can do there. So basically templates, it's about working smarter, not harder. Um, if we watch what happens if we wanted to change the order of this, and we yeah, I was going to ask this. you about that. Yeah. So if you happen to get a picture on top, um, there's this little pull down that says "Bring to front" or "Send to back." Now, if I go to "Send to back," you Does can that see that oh, yeah. it it goes underneath the picture, right? And then I also have "Send backward" means it goes back one. 
layer. So let's say I want to get this up. So I'm going to say bring forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so in this case, that did it. If I do this one, bring to front, it's going to sit over top wow. of everything else. Now, let's say I don't like how that looks. I can always undo, go back to my home tab and undo or uh, control Z. And does it as well. Control nice. Z. I didn't, I didn't remind us of that enough. That's another great one. Control yeah. Z to redo it. So we always want to work smarter, not harder. Control D to duplicate. Control Z to undo. Lots of uh, tips and things there. So friends, as we wrap up today, we want to know in the form, what did you create? Which of these templates did you work with? Did you use the hockey card? Did you use a magazine cover? Did you use the cartoon strip? What team yeah. was on your hockey card? <laughs> Are you with Dennis and you're a Winnipeg Jets fan? Are you a Canadian fan? Are you a Leafs fan? Right what on. did you What did you change? Did you have a movie or a novel uh, for the character summary? What uh, What are some of the responses from our chat there, Dennis? Well, you know, one of the things you can do, I, I, there's no nothing in just yet, but I know when I go to the hockey card or the player the, the player card, I know in the past, I've seen other teachers do this as well, is if you are in, let's say, a food web and you want to have the different, you know, the producers and consumers ah. and the, the, you know, the herbivores and the carnivores, you could change that over to have a picture of a lion, let's say, or a, a beaver or a hawk, you know, going after a snake, those types of things. And you could have that in there as a player name. One thing that I really appreciated about this uh, is, is uh, Cami, that I didn't know is if you right click, it keeps it in the same layer. That is so, it makes it so you know, much and, easier. And if we want to talk about working smarter, not harder, Dennis, that is probably the number one tip today when we're designing in these templates. They are made up of layers. Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, if, if you don't remember anything else, right-click, change picture, and then you can choose. Or also if it's um, – let's find one that's an icon. So if we go down here, we have an icon. If you, again, right-click, change graphic, you get to choose. And mm. if we have the text box – uh, or a shape, we can get a different menu as well. So if I right click on the shape, you can see down here, this would have been faster. I can change uh, the fill colors. All right, so again, right click. We know that an item is highlighted because it is surrounded by those dots. The, the, yeah, the handles, I like calling them. The handles, oh, good, I like that, yeah. I'm not okay. too sure if that's the, the official name, but I like calling it handles. Yes, the handles. All right. So change the outline. We can change the color. There we go. So when you have those, whatever you have, the handles are on is where your live work is going to happen. Nice. Looking good. So we still, it uh, looks like everybody's working very hard. Ava and Aisland and Zoe and Susan. Um, Sophie, thanks for joining us here. I'd let us know in the in the forum if you have a favorite part or a favorite template you're working on, and what new skill did you come up with today? I really like that right click, and I like those cartoon cartoon pictures, uh, cartoon faces, and cartoon uh, people. It's a lot of fun. All right, so just a few little things as we wrap up today. Actually, let's just get to the back here. Um, you also have uh, okay. a couple other places that we can go for design templates. Um, you might have heard, or your teacher might have heard of Slides Mania. And so, Slides Mania is a place that has all sorts of templates, PowerPoint templates as well. Slides Carnival is another one, Slides uh, Go.com. So, they, they have templates, and any of those templates, remember, you can always change the page size to be a printed page. That's another great thing that we learned today is to do the custom page size. Uh, that is another place to go for lots and lots of templates. But remember friends, you have those templates now that you can use. You can copy. Oh, actually let's, let's pop back here and I want to show this one thing. So let's say that you want to copy this whole thing. If you come to the thumbnails, we call these thumbnails of the slides and now can you see 
how there's an orange box around the Canadian Geographic on the thumbnails on the left-hand side, Dennis? Yep. If I right-click, I can duplicate slide and it'll, you know, if I want to try again, or maybe I want to save the original and do another one, I can duplicate slide that way. But if I just press copy, it will copy the whole thing. And I could open a brand new PowerPoint and paste it in there. And then I just have that template. If I just want to take a single. Wow. Template that's pretty cool. One. That's yeah. cool. Oh, Susan actually put in, she made a science weekly news with uh, March 22nd, 23rd article from Canadian press on eye drops causing loss of vision and deaths from microbes. Wow. That's pretty impressive. All right. So great way that's to use great. current events and science all together there. Okay. Yeah. So Dennis, it looks like our time is up. I had so much fun designing and showing you PowerPoint tricks. I hope you have some tricks as you leave us today in the form. What was the best tip or trick that you learned mm -hmm. that will make you a more efficient designer? We'd love to know. But for now, we're going to sign off and say thanks for joining us today at Cobblestone Collective. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.